are some of the key questions that as an analytics team in customer service operations, we want to tackle. So uh, to look at what kind of analytics is conducted in the call center vertical, uh, the key questions that we're trying to answer for our call center operations are, how many calls did we get, right? And how long were the calls? How many customers are calling us repeatedly? And were the customers satisfied if our, uh, with our service? And for each of these questions, there is a why component. So how many calls did we get and why did we get so many calls or so few calls? How, how long were the calls? Why were the calls uh, uh, longer than the average threshold? How many customers are calling us repeatedly? Why is the repeat rate so high? And uh, were our customers satisfied? Uh, if yes, why? If not, why? And some of the KPIs that we look at, I'm not going to go through all of these, but some of the KPIs that we look at is from a perspective of calls coming in, calls being answered, how many times the transfer takes place, and then the different rates uh, with respect to events happening in the business or uh, with respect to different kind of segmentation. Uh, in the how long were the calls question, we break down the handle time. Handle time is, 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 is the master metric. We break that down to ring time, hold time, talk time, et cetera, and sort of analyze each of these individually and see how and where we can optimize uh, in, in serving our customers better. And then uh, we look at repeats on a two hour, one day, three day, seven day, 31 day basis. So we get quite granular with respect to if a customer is calling us back again. Uh, for the same issue. And then we also look at um, satisfaction scores, right? So it's on a scale of one to 10, how likely are you, uh, um, how likely would you recommend the Verizon brand to your friends and families or on a scale of one to 10, how uh, would you rate your recent interaction with the agent when you'd call in, in the call center? So we look at the rep interaction scores, the VZ satisfaction scores. And all of these metrics, we, uh, um, look at horizontal trends day over day, week over week, month over month. We look at different correlations and anomalies. We look at how they've performed the actual versus how we forecasted the different uh, events that are happening in the business, product launches, weather related events, and of course, 2020 COVID, uh, pre, during, post event performances. And then we segmented by different plans, customer attributes, device attributes, promos, offers, et cetera. But the most important segmentation that we do for these questions is of the drivers and the sub drivers and the call reasons and the call subtopics. And that's basically to understand at a granular level, why are customers calling us? So the way we do that, the way we get to the reasons, sub reasons, subtopics, um, the, the call categories is through speech analytics. And so let me just take a minute to explain how speech analytics works, like at a high level, I'm not going to uh, dive deep into the technicalities, but in general, when a customer calls into the call center, uh, you get a message, uh, calls are recorded for quality and training purposes, right? And the way quality is improved or the way training, uh, uh, effective training is taking place is through analytics. So when a customer calls in, those calls are recorded and then based on the keyword spotting, if, if a customer has mentioned a particular device or if a, if a call has a negative sentiment, they're then categorized uh, to convert from speech to text. And so once they're converted to the text transcripts, then uh, a lot of NLP techniques are applied and keywords are extracted and topics are modeled, et cetera, which are then categorized in different drivers, sub-drivers, uh, reasons, sub-reasons, topics, subtopics which uh, are then stored in our enterprise data warehouses. And so the different analysts and data scientists in the company, they would query these uh, tables in the warehouses to get that data and then research and analyze and slice and dice and then visualize and then report it out to stakeholders so that they can take actions. So um, I want to start showing some of the dashboards that are built on top of speech analytics, right? Let's look at that. And before I start showcasing, I want to mention a few things. Uh, the dashboards that you're going to see are all personally created by me. And these real dashboards, uh, uh, and these dashboards are real dashboards and they're being used in the business. But the actual numbers in these dashboards are redacted or replaced by hash signs for the purpose uh, of this webinar. And um, one other thing I want to mention is I won't be going 
too much into the technical detail. The idea is to show you some, uh, you know, vignettes of several dashboards in Tapas style, if you will, uh, so that you get a decent flavor of our analytics work. Uh, if you if you're interested in diving deep into a dashboard uh, or getting technical, I encourage you to visit my YouTube channel where uh, I have several Tableau conference videos giving detailed explanations for these for these dashboards. So the first dashboard that I want to showcase is an example of our high level strategic dashboards, which we built for our leadership so that they get uh, a sense of the health of the call center business at any given snapshot in time. So the leadership wanted a balance sheet of the call center business where at any given snapshot in time, uh, you would get to know the answers for the four key questions that we just talked about. And again, remembering the four key questions, so how long were the calls? We have a swim lane for calls here. And we have a swim lane for AHT for how, how long were the calls, excuse me. How many calls did you get? We have a swim lane for calls. Uh, the repeat percentage, again, a swim lane, and the satisfaction score, again. So it's, it's the, the key four questions that are established in the dashboard, which are then further broken down by the different call reasons. And within the same view, now you can dive deep uh, into the subtopics for the call reason A by just hovering over um, the um, the, the volume piece. So we use Vision tooltips in Tableau to get you a sense of the different topics that comprise call reason A. And then you can also look at how things have performed um, uh, same time versus previous time. So month till date versus prior month till date, what's gone up, what's gone down, et cetera. And if you find something that's gone down, so for example, the uh, call uh, time, the handle time for call reason E has gone down uh, for the given dates that you've plugged in. Um, you can now look at, okay, overall call reason E handle time has gone down, but within call reason E, there are certain subtopics that have gone up, certain topics that have gone down. The overall result is uh, that the call reason has gone down. So just, uh, uh, again, a level of uh, uh, further granularity you can establish in the same view by using vision tool tips. Um, also, you you can see the uh, same KPIs being visualized in a time series here to see how they've performed over time. So you got line graphs and you can change the granularity of the line graph. So when I change it from a weekly here to um, uh, a daily, you can start seeing the seasonality where uh, how the call volume fluctuates during a weekday versus a weekend, et cetera. Also, uh, you can establish variables in Tableau, so you can sort of swap these measures uh, um, to see in the same view. You don't have to go to a different view. So you can look at how AHTs performed over time, repeat percentages performed over time, etc. cetera. Uh, a whole world of filters and segments are um, um, are implemented in this uh, menu dropdown. So once you plug in the dates, you plug in your uh, different filters and segments, the way you want to slice and dice the dashboard, everything that you see in the dashboard will get to a point where it will only show you that kind of pinpointed um, um, information for that instance that you would want to um, have a look at. And then once you've uh, um, gotten to the view that you want to uh, analyze and dive deep into, then you can now have something like a hyperlink where you can click and the parameters that you've used to slice and dice data, they would pass through the link into our larger inventory of dashboards uh, for you to dive deep and further analyze. So for example, we've seen that call reason E, repeat percentage is higher compared to previous month. I can now hover over this, look at what's gone up, what's gone down, and now I can now click and navigate to the dashboard that allows to listen to repeat calls. And so in that way, we've established a hub and spoke model where we have a large inventory of dashboards that's granular, that tackles situational uh, you know, uh, um, um, aspects with respect to analytics. All of those get tethered to the mothership executive summary, um, which we just saw. So it's like a hub and spoke model. So we, we did not, we did not cannibalize on the existing inventory of dashboards, but we capitalized and uh, um, we complemented uh, it uh, by bringing uh, um, uh, like a summary together. Uh, 
So that's an example of a high level executive summary dashboard for our leadership to understand how the call center business uh, is, is functioning. And uh, once we've established the, the, the key KPIs, now it's time to look at the relationships of these KPIs. So for example, if I just take the top right quadrant, uh, on the x-axis, you have the AHT, which is the handle time for how long the calls are. On the y-axis, I have a repeat percentage. And now I can plot those reasons and see where they fall in that spectrum. And so for to, to give you an example, uh, when I hover over subtopic 86, I see that the AHT is 13.7% more from average and the repeats are 30.8% more from the average. So the calls are longer, but still we are getting repeat calls. So this is an area of opportunity to improve and uh, to dive deep and uh, see what's going on in here. Again, subtopic 118, HT is 37% higher, repeats are 26% higher. So uh, this is definitely uh, an area, uh, a, a reason of concern that we need to explore more. Similarly, you can see at the bottom graph, you've got AHT on the x-axis again, satisfaction um, on the y-axis again. And so the subtopic C has 23% longer calls, but still the satisfaction is minus 3% than average. So even though the agent is taking a lot of time to satisfy the customer, the customer is still not satisfied. So like an area of opportunity here. Uh, subtopic 118 again pops up. So not only AHT is much higher than average, satisfaction is much lower than average. So 118, we saw repeats are high, calls are long, and satisfaction is low. So you would find these relationships between KPIs and then find areas of opportunities to you know, improve and dive deep in, and, and dig in. So um, I also wanted to touch on uh, a tactical dashboard. You know, um, uh, we looked at a strategic high-level dashboard. Now let's look at a tactical dashboard where we've used Tableau to build outlier and anomaly detection systems. So again, the two two major KPIs: the call volume coming in and how long the calls are (AHT) for for the calls. So what you look at here is uh, on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. It's a historical time trend of how our call volume fluctuates. And we are looking at the daily version here. But you go back, you look, you can go back two years, three years, so that you get the same time last year kind of comparison too. Um, and what you find is, okay, now once we've plotted this, we can now gauge the vol volatility or the fluctuation with respect to looking at certain central tendencies. So I look at the mean of the population via reference line. Then you look at which are some of the um, days where we've had call volume greater than one standard deviation from the mean. And when that happens, a bad anomaly is detected in red. And which are some of the days where we have HT, for example, uh, less than uh, uh, or one standard deviation below from the mean of the population. So a good anomaly is detected in that sense. And so not only an anomaly is detected, it also shows you, the bottom charts also shows you the different call reasons that have caused that anomaly. So we look at Okay, if it's a daily uh, view, we look at the moving average of uh, previous eight Sundays as a baseline. So we, for example, you're looking at Sunday, you look at the volume of current Sunday, compare that to a baseline of previous eight Sundays, you get a moving median, moving, moving average, et cetera, and then rank those drivers to see which are some of the drivers which are creating incremental pressure. Same for AHT, same for call volume. And so the the, the cool thing is uh, parameter actions is one feature I like a lot where you can click on these individual dates going back historically and see the uh, um, um, days change as well. So uh, we're going to look at not only week over week, but look at same day of week, previous eight weeks, et cetera. A, a, a lot of flexibility with respect to getting the right amount of uh, uh, information for incremental pressure. Detecting anomalies is one part of problem solving. A, a crucial part, an important part, is notifying the pertaining stakeholders when an anomaly is detected. So we use Tableau subscriptions where not only when an anomaly is detected, it takes a screenshot, plugs it in, in an email body. It also highlights the anomaly that has been detected, and it sh shoots out an email to the, to, the, to the stakeholders in the business that, okay, HT was above or equal to a threshold of so-and-so, or percentage difference from last eight, same days of week was above so-and-so. Whatever thresholds you would, you would uh, set from, based on the uh, um, work area of your team. Now, 
we also have certain special cases and where we'd want to uh, um, improve or optimize on a particular metric in the business. And so I want uh, I wanted to showcase a dashboard example of uh, how we reduce the repeats for certain callers who are highly engaged with our call center. So different customers have different calling behaviors, right? And we had certain customers who were uh, uh, calling us repeatedly and were highly engaged with our call centers. So how do you treat them? How do you increase their satisfaction? And so the way we did that was create a customer level dashboard. So you can see each row here is a customer ID. And we analyze 17 different attributes for that customer. So for example, where they come from, which state, uh, what uh, age distribution they fall in, um, uh, how long they've been with us, which is the tenure of the customer, what type of service they have, what type of sentiment bucket they fall in. So usually are there calls, negative sentiment, positive sentiment, et cetera, and so on and so forth. So we analyze 17 different attributes to uh, uh, bucket these customers into different cohorts for treatment. And then once uh, these cohorts are established, the next time the customer calls in, they're then routed to a team of special reps. And so this dashboard is showing you the post routing performance um, of how the initiative like is impacting. So for example, I select a cohort three and uh, as time passes in the line graph, I can see their call volume going down when they're routed to a team of special reps for treatment. And we see the resolution rate go up, we see the satisfaction index go up, and we see the call volume go down, dispatches go down, the billing adjustments go down. And this is also reflected in the call volume calendar heat map, where as time passes, these customers calling behavior go from a whole lot of yellow and red into the green, so which is good for us.